Hi, it's Dr. Mark Morin from the Great Lakes Education Center here to bring you some exciting news. Uh, I've been a CIRIC user for 21 years now, and every time they come out with something new, it blows my mind. Well, we've got a software update to you uh, that is second to none. Uh, the most amazing update I've seen probably in 21 years. And uh, lucky for you, we can share with you a little piece of it. And uh, we have an opportunity today to demonstrate it and, and show you some of the ins and outs and some of the, uh, some of the new things you're going to love. So uh, we're going to spend a couple minutes here and do a crown uh, and show you exactly how this new software works. So we're going to do a crown in number 30. Uh, we're going to go ahead here and we're going to start. Um, you can see that the screens are all different. So this is what we're going to show you. We're going to add a new patient now. Uh, you have um, all different windows here. So we're going to add in a new patient. And we're going to call it, uh, obviously, uh, Mark Morin. We're going to go ahead and go forward. Okay, now we're going to pick out the tooth. So we're going to do a crown and number 30. So we're going to say crown. Uh, you'll see that now we have our choice. We have two types of restorations now. We have a crown or an inlay on -lay. Obviously, this is going to be a full crown. We have a design mode. We have three levels. We have biogeneric copy, biogeneric individual, and biogeneric reference. You know my preference is biogeneric individual. I think it's incredible. So we're going to hit that one. Down below, you'll see that we have three boxes now. Every one that's underlined with a green line means that has been completed. We're going to select our material next. So now we have a choice of materials on the front end. So now we're going to tell it we're going to do an Ivoclar Vivident uh, and we're going to do an Emax crown. If we're going to do a full crown, in my opinion, Emax is the way to go. Uh, now that we've got all three that are green, we hit OK, the green arrow check mark OK, and now we're ready to begin the restoration. So we're going to go move forward, and now it's going to activate the camera. So immediately, uh, the camera activates. You can see the blue ray is on, and you can see that the quality of the image is incredible. And you can say, just like your camera, uh, the uh, crosshair is a little smaller, uh, but I think that the picture is incredible contrast uh, and equally defined in the model to be incredibly clear and incredible high contrast and, and I like that. So we've taken all our pictures there. Uh, we're going to put the camera down. Uh, we're going to turn off the camera for a second. Now we're going to move over to the upper jaw and now we're going to do this in articulation mode with a buckle bite so that you can see exactly what it looks like. So now we're going to go and we're going to activate the camera and start to take pictures of the upper jaw. So now we're going to take the molar, molar, and as you know, uh, if I'm going to take a buckle bite, I prefer to go to the canine in order to have great articulation. So I go all the way to the canine if I'm going to do a buckle bite here. Okay, we're going to turn that off, and now we're going to go take the buckle, so we're going to activate that, turn the camera back on, take the models and put them together. And now you're going to see me take a picture of the buckle. Remember, I don't want any of the prep in this, so I'm going to focus really carefully on the bicuspids and the canine. Snap that picture, put it into place, turn that off. Now, uh, watch this, because this is really cool. If we go down below and we hit any of these boxes, uh, we now can see all of our pictures, and we can analyze those pictures. We can go here and stand here and look at that picture, making sure that it's the right quality, uh, everything's visible, the margins are view. Uh, we can go look at this tooth, make sure it's down the long axis and that tooth is clean. We can go to this one and look at this one and make sure it's down the long axis. And you know in my teaching, uh, this is very, very important that we evaluate this because this determines how easy and how quick the software is going to make a good proposal. So in my opinion, this is phenomenal. Once, and you can look at the uh, upper jaw pictures, by the way. Uh, they're all there. And you can look at the buckle bite pictures. So it's a great way to look and see how you did on the quality of those pictures. Because you remember, green check mark doesn't mean a good picture. It just means the machine accepted it. Okay. Once we get all our pictures in place, we're going to green arrow. And now the machine's going to make an incredible model. It's going to take a couple minutes here. Uh, and you're going to see it does this much faster uh, in the new software version here. Uh, and I think you're going to see the quality of the model again, uh, in my, uh, uh, my opinion, is phenomenal. So we're going to give this a couple minutes to render. Again, it's going to render the three pictures that you currently see, the lower arch, the upper arch, and the buckle bite, and then we'll overlay them uh, to make it articulate. 
uh, we'll give this a couple minutes here uh, to put all those pictures together. Um, as it um, puts those pieces together, here it comes. And there we go. So now what we're going to do is we'll take the buckle bite, and you're used to this, and we'll overlay it over the model on the upper, and you'll see it'll attach itself. Okay, and then we'll take it and put it over the lower. And it should attach itself here. And if it doesn't, there's no reason to panic. Bring it back down, try it again. And there it is. And we can take a look now. We have an articulated model. Okay. And now we can move forward and see that the buckle registration is done. So we're going to hit the arrow to move forward. And now it'll give us a model to design the margin. Okay. And you know that many of you, um, if the automatic margin doesn't work, remember, you still have your tools here. Uh, you can easily go over here and go here and say you want to do the manual margin. Okay. And now you can go and get the manual mode. So all your tools are still here. Don't panic. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the manual mode uh, with the other software. But I'll tell you, with this software, I'm not too big a fan with the manual mode. I, I think the automatic margin finder now with the high quality resolution uh, that I think that the picture looks, I don't think you need the manual mode. So I think this is a huge step forward and an upgrade. We can check our margin, make sure it looks all good. Once we set our margin, now you see down here, define insertion axis has a red line underneath it. Ah, that's a reason. Haven't done that step yet. So I'm going to click on that step, move forward, and now I'm going to set up the insertion axis. So I'm going to move the model, uh, and you'll see that if you don't move the model a lot, what have I told you? Um, you've done a good job with your pictures. If you've got to move the model a lot here, the machine's telling you, should have took a better picture. Once I get it accurate, get it set here, I hit the green, check mark again. Those three steps are complete now. They're all green, 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 green. And now what do I do? Go forward. Now the machine's going to make a proposal. It's going to calculate. So we're going to give it a few minutes here uh, to do its rendition. Uh, and it's going to morph it into place. Um, you're going to see that I think that the quality of the restoration uh, is high quality. Uh, and I'm going to think that the proposal that we get now right out of the bat, I think, has really, really improved tremendously. Uh, and I think that makes it incredible. For instance, let's just look at the occlusal marks here. Have you ever seen a bite or a, a buckle bite produce marks that good and that accurate right out of the box? Uh, let's take a look at the proposal itself, both buckle and lingual. I mean, uh, it doesn't get any better. It just doesn't get any better. If you look at the proposal uh, along the lingual path, if you look at the central fissure, the proposed cusp heights, I mean, this is as good as it gets, guys, as good as it gets. Um, now, remember, uh, let me show you. If you right mouse click, you'll see that your tools come up in a circle. Now, this freaks you out in the beginning because they look different, but these are the same tools you have in your machine. They're just different. Uh, you have a, a circle here, and I, I sort of like this one. This is a recalculation. If you don't like the original proposal, the machine will do a second calculation, uh, which is kind of cool. This one here is really kind of cool as well. This allows us to change the biogeneric pr pr proposal. So if you don't like the proposal, you don't like this much anatomy, you can actually move this circle and the restoration is going to morph. It's going to change. And you look real carefully. It's going to give you more anatomy. It's going to flatten the cusp. So you have the control to be able to do this almost directly. You don't have to go all the way back to the beginning like you used to now. You can do it right here. Uh, we can go back to the tools again, uh, and you can see we still have our, our form plus tool. We still have our form negative tool. Um, the little slide in the center is how you make it bigger or smaller. Uh, the smooth tool, again, is still here. Uh, you've got your form 3D tool, uh, and you also have your auto form 3D tool. You still have your, your sh move tool if you want to move it to the right, move it to the left, buckle lingual. And you have your rotation tool where you can actually rotate it. Um, so everything's still here. Don't panic. And I can close out of this now, and I can go over here now. Let's just take a look at the context. So I can look at my objects, view my objects, and I can split the model. And then I can go to analyze, and I can say I want to analyze the context. By the way, the little green circle here in the menu means that that is active. So if I roll the model over here, you can see that that's why the contact now has green. If I go back to my view objects and I turn that off, uh, analyze tools, and I turn that off, you'll see that the contact then goes away. So the green circle means that that particular tool is active. 
okay? Which is also why I have my occlusal contacts because that tool says it's active. That green circle means that the occlusal contact mark is on. So um, some really cool things in here, guys. Uh, and now if I can go back and I can go back to my view object, I can put it back in the model. Uh, and you can see I can have, uh, I'll take a look at my model. Some other cool tools in here, uh, uh, just to give you a quick little thing. Uh, if I want to add, let's go to add. Now I can grab a tool, and just like you used to, you'll see that it's small. If I hold the button down and roll it forward, you can see now I get a big one. Okay, you can see by the image. So now I can hold it down, and I can actually wax in uh, a contact there. 30 seconds, and it's quick, boy. It's really, really quick. Okay, so I can go and change a tool and make it a negative tool and take it away. And also, I can now go back in here and do the exact same thing and wax this away. And you can see it's very small now, so it takes a few more minutes. So you all got your same tools. Uh, there's no sense in being uh, uh, really uh, too worried about this. Uh, I think it gives us a little bit more flexibility. I think it's a little bit more intuitive. Uh, and in my opinion, it's much simpler uh, once you really get the hang of it, for sure. Um, once I get the restoration designed the way I want it, uh, and I don't think that you're going to do too much manipulation here if you took good pictures, uh, you green arrow forward. Um, and now we go forward and take a look at the proposal. Um, so we're going to get the model now, um, uh, the restoration on the block. Uh, we can go over here to the position tools. Uh, we can change the sprue position. Uh, we can rotate the block. We can do a block move, and we can also do a position tool. Now, you see the position tool has the green circle lit up here. That means that tool is active. If I want to change the sprue, I would go down here and hit this, and now I'm able to change the sprue position. Okay? So that's what those little things mean. If everything looks good to you, uh, you can go down here to change block size, adjust mill position. Um, you're total free to do whatever you want. Choose your block size and absolutely choose the block, a 12 or a 14, put it in there. Uh, you got the same milling chamber, and I'm telling you, you're going to see a restoration comes out of this machine that's absolutely gorgeous with a lot less messing in the tools, in my opinion. The software, vast, vast improvements. I'm telling you, this is amazing, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Otherwise, hope you're having a great day, and remember, prep powder picture, man, hasn't changed in 20 years. Keep them right.